Okay, this is a pretty common situation in areas where you have cooler mornings and warmer afternoons. You're going to run into working on, maybe just servicing, an air conditioner below acceptable outside ambient temperatures. Remember, these things do not work well below about 70 degrees outside temperature unless they were designed for it. Okay, I'm showing 59 degrees outdoor temperature. I've got an indoor temperature of about 72 and a half, 73. Uh, so that's not too bad. But my pressures and my superheat and subcool are a little goofy. Now the superheat's way hot. And the suction pressure, let's take a look at this. Now that's showing superheat there. Now saturated, I'm at 30 degrees. Okay, that's below freezing. Fairly good chance it won't freeze up. The indoor coil won't freeze up at this temperature, but it could. So, uh, should I add charge to this thing? Is it low on charge? Let's go back and look at uh, Super Eat again. See, we're just kind of holding that super heat there at, you know, real high. Should I add charge to this thing? Well, I'm going to try something else before we do that. Notice our head pressure. And notice our condensing temperature. Okay. Uh, this thing probably runs about 30 degrees uh, above ambient for its normal condensing temperature in an older machine. Uh, and we're a bit under that 30 now. Let's see what happens if I was to block off that condenser. Okay, now I've blocked off a piece of that condenser. And let's see what happens to that head. Now notice there's a lot of changes going on here. The low side's going up. This is a fixed orifice device machine, so the head pressure, the difference between the head pressure and the suction pressure is going to determine uh, how much refrigerant flows through. Well, let's look at our superheats. Okay. Now, I'm going to give this thing a while to do its thing because I want it to settle down. Okay, after giving this some time to settle out, uh, the head pressure I like to be right close to 200. A little under is okay. I'm still sitting there at 58, 59 degrees uh, outside temperature. Notice now my suction pressure is up to a more normal, it's a little bit low. Super eats about right now. Subcool is higher than I'd expect. However, oftentimes I get that with subcool just simply because uh, when I block off a condenser, it's not perfect in imitating a higher outdoor amp. It doesn't always block every every part I want it to block, so there can be some some voids in there, and you sometimes will get a little bit higher subcool. I don't ever want to say blocking off a condenser is the perfect way to do things, but it is a way to do it when you need uh, to get charged pretty close. It's always nice to come back in a warm day and uh, check it again. But anyway, there was no charge problem with this machine. It was simply the outside temperature. Now I'm gonna pull that block off again and we'll watch what happens. Now, I've let it come back down to where it was. Uh, 
our suction pressure is a little bit higher than it was before uh, but our super heat has gone out of sight that's mostly because this head pressure has dropped quite a bit when that head pressure drops that much the pressure difference between high side and low side have reduced quite a bit so it's not going to push as much refrigerant through so you're going to get a higher super heat now this is only with a fixed orifice device a TXV controlled machine is actually more versatile, more adaptable to lower outside ambience than fixed orifice are in a general sense. It's not always true. So uh, here's one of the reasons I did this. It is so common for service techs to go out and find a unit, low outdoor ambient, and thinking, oh gosh, this thing's low on charge. Look at the superheat's out of sight. Then they top up the charge to try to get that superheat right. When they do, they overcharge the machine. And then hot day comes, head pressure goes crazy out of sight, could lose compressor, all these uh, terrible things that could be happening. So, if you are working with a machine at low outdoor ambience, there's two things you have to have. Reduce flow across the condenser and a reasonable indoor ambient. If the indoor ambient 65, it's not going to work either. They don't work that low. So uh, this one today had about a 72 to 73 degree indoor ambient, which was okay. That worked pretty good. Okay, so that's it on checking charge for the unit under low ambient outdoor conditions.